to you still watching Pita Freak. Thank you so much for choosing to stay with us. Let's answer the trivia question of the week. I asked you earlier, I did say, who is the current holders of the CAF Champions League and the CAF Confederations Cup? Now, you know that I believe in teamwork makes the dream work, so I'm not going to give you the answer. My partner in crime, Jessica Vakamo Sonkomo, who has a rock on her finger, but we're not going to talk about that. You are so spicy <laughs> this whole week, but yeah, we'll talk about that. So Congratulations. Much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's get into it. Yes. Let's get into it. So the correct answer, two big African giants, um, but for CAF, um, Champions League, we have Al Ahli, and for CAF Confederation Cup, we have Zamalek. Yep, Al Ahli and Zamalek. That is the answer for the trivia question of the week. As you know, those two teams will be playing within the Super Cup that is set to take place out in Saudi Arabia, and they will have that battle to ultimately decide who are the kings of Africa. Thank you so much for playing along with us. You know, we do it again next week. So if you missed out on it this week, worry not. Next week, Raboa, same time, same place. Let's get into this now. The Ballon d'Or Awards are around the corner. The list of nominees has officially been revealed and may I say this is one of the most decorated individual awards mm. for one to win. 100%. Right? We talk about Ballon d'Ors, you think about, uh, well, Lionel Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, um, the list goes on and on. On and on and on. Sometimes you get upset, Jorge. People we want are not there. Not on the list. But in, in terms of women's football, mm. we're just like, okay. Whew. Okay, Miss Benz. All right. <laughs> okay, Miss Benz. I love the fact that I don't think any of us fathomed the fact that we'd be sitting right here and actually discussing African players, African women yeah. players, yeah. you know, who are nominated yeah. in such a monumental and such a big, you know, um, award ceremony. And we are talking about... Your fave. I can see that. Miss Benz. Why even say well, it? Because if you're not a banda, what yeah, are you? Of course. <laughs> like, what is life without being a banda? Yeah. Barbara Banda is nominated. A very well-deserving player that we talk about all the time on this show. We talk about her performance and her growth, you know, within the international space. And she's nominated alongside Tabita Chawinga. Yeah, yeah. You know, from Malawi, who's also a phenomenal player. We've seen what she's been doing. We saw her at PSG. We saw her at PSG. But I think this speaks volumes for the growth of African women's football. You know, it might be a very tough, um, you know, group to be in, yeah. but I think it's such a victory just to be placed there. Yeah. For us to have these conversations say, Loro, now we have made it. Recognition. You know? I mean, recognition. Loro, now we have made South Africa. You know, we are currently there with Ronan, you know? Yeah. But I think for women who are really doing so exceptionally well, I'm super proud. And I, I, goosebumps. Yeah. Halala. 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 Obviously, that list will be trickled down, but we do believe that they will make the final cuts. Congratulations to our African queens. And we know that more stars are going to be born from the competition being the CAF Women's Champions League. Yes which is coming up. 100%. Now, with the CAF Women's Champions League, let's talk about UWC, mm. right? And I know we've got everyone confirmed. Yes. Um, but I want to talk about UWC in a sec. Mm. Like, in a sense of, do you believe they have enough squad depth? This weekend, they were playing in the Hollywood Bet Super League. Mm. They were playing up against First Touch. Mm. And there was a terrible injury that took mm. place. And I'm just like, there's USA coming up. Yes. There's CAF Women's Champions League coming up. Yeah. You need to complete the league. Mm. Do we have enough depth mm. to go all the way? Unfortunately, I will have to say, I don't think so. And we spoke about this the, uh, last week and we were talking about their involvement in the varsity space in terms of you know football duty. And we know that university sports basically is more prioritized, to be quite honest, more than the Hollywood yeah. bits, you know? But I think CAF Champions League is definitely something that sits above all these other tournaments. But I think they are going to be very stretched. Um, you're speaking about injuries, you're speaking about the game time that they have to face. And they're not a very big squad, you know. Perhaps this is an opportunity to basically see the other players that we haven't seen. And mind you, um, I think yesterday, uh, yesterday or two days ago, um, the Banyana Banyana squad had actually went for their visas. So we oh, know yes, that there's yes. an upcoming um, friendly that's coming. And we know that a lot and of Banyana players come from where? UWC. Yeah. So already we are going to be facing those kind of problems and I think yeah. they're going to be very stretched. So I don't know in what position 
actually UW sits in terms of you know having replacements yeah. um, that are going because German is a top goal scorer, hundred percent, and you need that kind of player to basically you know um, assist you. And this is their first time, so you are basically trying to bring all the ammunition that you have, you know, the best of the best in the team. And somehow now it's not looking so great for them. But you know, football, you know, we can never actually say it's a guarantee that they're not going to have the greatest, you know, um, debut because of these things. They might, um, you know, turn it around. We know they're pacey players. We know that they're experienced within, you know, the footballing spaces. And we are hoping that the small pieces of experience are going to help. Just quickly, in closing, what do you think associations should be doing for clubs that are going to the CAF Women's Champions League, at least to support them? You know, I think we need a little bit of more. So. The game time is there, right? Yeah. But I think the game time that's there doesn't really bring so much competition. Mm. Perhaps international inter-club competitions okay. because then it gives you that experience yeah. outside of the players. Whether it's Varsity Cup and it's Hollywood Bates, mm. it's usually centered around the kind of players, the same players yeah. and the same um, game style. So I think perhaps maybe broadening it out to have international friendlies just so that we can get that yeah, that run for our money. Yeah. Well, Jess, that's where we're going to have to leave it. Her name is Jessica Vakamosonkoma. Lina Lakakiti Meleng Khosikhadi Akhabanda. You're seeing us for the last time because the show is going to be closed by Adelani as he tells us about his African stars that are shining within the Premier League. Happy birthday, E2. Hope you've saved me some birthday cake. On my list today, there's some illustrious names that you wouldn't believe have made it. Coming in at number five is Antoine Semenyo. Would you believe me if I told you that Everton were two goals up in the 87th minute against Bournemouth and still somehow managed to lose the game? Yo, what a crazy game that was. One of Ghana's biggest attacking threats, Antoine Semenyo scored the first of three late goals that stunned Goodison Park to silence. Last season, he only managed eight goals in 33 appearances, and this season he scored two in three matches already. Coming in at number four is Nicholas Jackson. As another Ghanaian player, Mohamed Kudus, agonizingly struck the bar against Manchester City, another West African footballer, Nicholas Jackson, was scoring his second goal in as many games. He was number five in our list last week, but this week he climbs up one place to number four after he completed 28 passes with an accuracy of 82%. Coming in at number three is Johan Wisa. Now, Ivan Tony ended up in Saudi Arabia. I still can't believe it. The 40 million man seemed to have generously donated a pair of his old shooting boots to his former teammate, Johan Wieser. The Congolese international showcased his pace, power, and technical ability in Brentford's 3-1 win over the Saints of Southampton. In his last 10 Premier League games, Wieser has been involved in 10 goals, scoring seven and assisting three. Coming in at number two is Brian Mbumo. At number two is Wieser's teammate. The Lion of Cameroon put on an indomitable performance against Southampton. After scoring twice and creating three chances in the match, Mbumo showed that he is more than capable of banging in some crucial goals in the absence of Ivan Toni. At number one is the Egyptian Messi, Mohamed Salah, who has simply refused to vacate our number one spot after his prime Ronaldo-esque performance against Manchester United. This priceless African gem now has an astonishing record of a hat-trick, 12 goals and 6 assists in 14 appearances against Manchester United in the Premier League. I'm sure United fans don't want to hear the name Salah and a random word of advice, don't mention Didier Drogba around any Arsenal fan. That wraps up this week's list. Let's do this again next week.